All right, I just launched at the appropriately named Foggy Waters Marina here on Bayou Liberty and Slidell. This place they just recently fixed up. It's super nice. It's a great launch now. It used to be an absolute crap hole. Won't be nice and call it a crap hole. But the plan today is to run to the trestles of Lake Pontchartrain. If you saw my last video, I hit the trestles on an absolutely dead tide. Caught a few fish, but nothing like I felt like I should have. Well, the tide's falling pretty hard right now, so I'm gonna head back and throw some big baits and see if I can catch some big speckle trout. But I gotta navigate through this fog some kind of way. It's, uh, it's pretty sketchy. I'm gonna be going really slow for a while. Hopefully it breaks. This is the scene. Yeah, I call that pea soup. <laughs> Hopefully it breaks pretty soon. Might take me a while to get there. All right, actually the ride getting out here wasn't so bad. As you can see, it's clear at the trestle, but look at that fog bank. That's pretty impressive. Sun's coming up to the east. The water here looks pretty good. I can see my prop pretty easily. One boat down by South Point fishing. I'm on the southern end of the trestle and I'm gonna throw this bait today. It's a glow colored, Mega Matrix. I'm trying to catch a big trout and they definitely have them out here. So hopefully it happens. Let's see. All right, I got my Mega Matrix team with a 3 8 ounce death grip jig head. And I can tell you, definitely don't have the same problem I did the other day. The other day I got burned by a dead tide. <laughs> tide is not dead today at all. It is rolling. Plus we got a west wind pushing with the tide. I haven't really fished the Mega Matrix all that much. I can tell you just haven't made a couple casts. Definitely feels a lot different than a traditional matrix. Certainly a lot more resistance, as you'd expect. Winds are supposed to be really light today, and it's not really blowing hard, but it is out the west, which is a bad direction for the lake. Just nothing stopping it. East wind, much easier to fish out here. Plus a west wind tends to dirty the water, although I don't think it's strong enough to do much damage today. Throwing this bait, I'll probably get fewer bites, but you would think the bites I do get will be from nicer fish. That's the plan anyway, we'll see. As Tyson said, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> Hopefully these fish don't punch us in the face. Now the reason I went with this glow color is because I figure these fish have to be feeding on pogies. Can't imagine there's any shrimp left in the lake. The brown shrimp are super tiny this time of year. They're not big enough to get eaten yet by the trout we want to catch. So it's got to be pogies or maybe mullet, either of which would be about the size and color of this glow mega matrix. No, oh, fog's moving in. It's getting closer. Might be foggy here in a minute. Kind of a little pocket. It's foggy to the south as well. Oh, there's a snag. I don't know what it is, but I know I got it good. Nice good hook set into it. Oh, bye bye bait. At least you left my leader. Thank you for that. Oh, there's a fish. All right, there we go. What are you? Are you my big trout? I don't know. I feel like you might be nice, whatever you are. Oh, it's a cat. <sighs> Blue cat. I hooked one of these the other day and lost him. This one was not so lucky. It's a good blue cat. He's gonna be dinner. Actually foul hooked. Got too close to that bait, huh dude? Of course, only bad thing with these guys. The little slime they leave on your line. Definitely gotta get that off. <laughs> We're gonna be enveloped in fog shortly. Good thing we're already on site. Oh, there's a fish. That's a trout, that's a trout. Good trout, real good trout. Mm. 
That's a chunky fish. That's a good trestle trout right there. He was off the bridge a little bit. The switch to the green hornet was the key, no doubt. That's a good fish. That was a good bite. Goodness, that's a good trout. Goodness. Stay in the boat. <laughs> Lucky to get him. Another really good fish. I just posted up here near where that other one bit. That fish was also off. There's another one. There we go. Mm. Good night, these fish are nice. Good Lord. That's some big trout. That's some big trout. Weight deep, good sign. Ooh, there we go. Ooh. That might be a red or a good trout or a good trout. Oh, we'll never know. We will never know. That was a good hit, too. Remember that fog I mentioned? <laughs> it found us. When you're out here and you get on a little bite like this, you kind of got to talk in hushed tones because you don't want to draw a lot of attention. Most people are respectful, but you have some who are not. <laughs> Definitely had guys come right up on top of me and set up where I'm... Oh, shoot, just missed him. Set up where I'm catching fish. So the volume goes down when the action gets good. And I'm just posted up here, just, I mean, certainly not getting a bite on every cast, not even close, but definitely enough that I'm not gonna move until this bite just completely wanes. All right, there's that bite I felt. He left me a scale. Definitely looked like a trout scale too. And many of my bites are coming way out here. Not right up on the bridge at all. I have gotten some right up on the bridge. That nice one I just lost, whatever it was, was right up on the bridge. But there seems to be a school out here off the bridge. Now these fish are definitely big enough to have hit that mega matrix. But you know, a lot of the bait this time of year is super small. So it may not be keyed in on anything quite that big yet. And water temp is 63. So it's still on the cool side. These fish are not hyper aggressive yet. We're in pea soup now. All right, it appears our bite here is dried up. Time to move on. We're gonna keep fishing south, even though a bunch of boats have gone down there. It's gotten crowded. Gotta make hay while this tide's moving. Oh, goodness, that was a good hit. That was a good hit. I don't know how I missed that fish. Another hit. Well, let's sit here a minute. Oh, another hit. There's one. He was right up on that stanchion. Not a big fish. Oh, man, he's bigger than I thought he was. Never mind. <laughs> he was just swimming at me. Oh, goodness. 
this is just awesome. This is just as good as it gets. Dude, you, you were never getting off. No chance. Look at that yellow mouth. Such a beautiful sight. Now, these fish are generally bigger than I keep, but heading to see my daughter tomorrow in Houston, and she asked for fish, so. When your daughter asks for fish, you bring her fish. These fish are definitely concentrated toward the south shore. So I'm fishing really slowly. Like when I get a bite, I just kind of stop and make a bunch of casts of those pilings before I move on. Doesn't make sense to keep moving. This is where the fish are most concentrated, clearly. And it's not an every cast bite, that's for sure. Oh goodness, it's more fun than every cast bite. Oh goodness, these trout are beautiful, man. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh, they're all rubber stamps. I mean, they're like 18, 19 inch fish. Look at that. Look at that. Green Hornet. Man, dude, you got hooked outside the mouth and not very well at that. I'm lucky to get you. Just for kicks, let's we'll see how big he is. I'm betting 18. Yep, 18. 18 inch trout. This Green Hornet's a very underrated color on this bridge. Not a lot of people fish it but it's productive. So we're only in early March. This is really the beginning of this trestle bite. It's only gonna intensify as this month moves along as we get into April and May. Now the fish may get smaller. That's usually the case. It's early in the season when you catch these really, really solid fish. And you can definitely catch five, six pounders out here no doubt might have had one hooked up today had something big could have been a redfish but he got off a few keys out here you definitely want to let your bait get to the bottom big mistake that a lot of beginners make it's not letting their bait get to the bottom and as a general rule you want to start on the down current side it's not always the case that that's where the fish are definitely not had many great trips on the upcurrent side. And actually a little while ago, a boat passed trolling across over here. And so I saw him catch a couple of fish on that other side. But greater than 50% of the time, they're on the downcurrent side. And you want to try a bunch of different cadences to see what the fish want. And sometimes, believe it or not, they just want to straight retrieve <laughs> right along the bottom. I've tried that a few times today, though I haven't gotten a bite. They seem to be in feeding mode and want it pretty aggressive. Now, of course, we're fishing on a falling tide today, but generally in the spring, I prefer a rise. You feel like a rise is bringing bait in from outside. In the fall, it's the opposite. You want a falling tide because it's pulling bait out of the lake past these stanchions where the fish are posted up. But obviously, if the fish are here, they're gonna bite on a fall. I just hate fishing this place when the tide's not moving. My last video, you saw that. We got here at the tail end of a falling tide, did well, and that tide quit and just wouldn't switch and start rising. Took forever. Tried to wait it out and finally ran out of time. Caught a few fish on the... Oh, goodness. Caught a few fish from the dead tide. I can't tell you how fun this is. Just getting these hard hits from these beautiful trout. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Oh, stay in the boat. All right. I mean, rubber stamp. Look at the fat belly. He's got something in there. He's definitely been eating. We'll see later when we clean him. If you jig for trout in your fishing career, you're familiar with that, that doink. Your bait's just minding its own business and all of a sudden, bonk. Just an unmistakable trout hit. You set the hook and you ride bows and you know he's on there. It's just, just nothing better. What do people who don't fish get excited about? I don't know. Catching beautiful trout on soft plastics, that gets me excited. Now I launched today at Bayou Liberty. There are also nearby launches in Eden Isles, Lake Catherine, then Irish Bayou. All provide easy access to all of these bridges. And there are three bridges, the trestle, which is the train track, Highway 11 and I-10. My buddy Chad Champagne, the inventor of Matrix Shad, fishes out here 
almost daily. And he catches fish at the other two. But generally, the trestle's far more productive. A lot of people say the fish at Highway 11 are bigger, and that definitely used to be the case. I don't know that it is anymore. It just seems like you get fewer bites there. And it gets a lot less pressure. But it is a good fallback. If you come to the trestle and it's just crazy crowded, you can generally catch a few fish at Highway 11. Well, gonna lose this bait. That's another problem with the trestle. Lots of snags. This is the second one I've lost today, which isn't terrible. But you are gonna lose baits. Generally go up and try and pull it off, but <laughs> it's usually futile. There's a lot of junk on the bottom, which is one of the reasons there's so many fish here. Hopefully it leaves my leader. It sucks when you gotta take a break and tie on a whole new leader. Nope, did not leave the leader. <laughs> All right, be back in a second. Oh, I guess it'd be a good time to tell you I am fishing 30 pound braid with a 16 pound Daiwa fluorocarbon leader. Oh, there we go. There's a fish threw on his head, right on his head, threw right on his head. What are you? You're a trout. You're just a big one. Are we gonna get you or not? Man. Oh goodness. Beautiful fish. Whew. You threw that hook right at me, dude. I don't blame you. A little revenge. Alright, we're gonna let this guy go. I got enough fish. I catch some small ones. I might keep another small one or two. But this dude is not a small one. There's a fish right on the bottom. Oh, flounder. That's why he's on the bottom. <laughs> caught a couple of these the other day, but this is nicer than the two I caught. Good stuff in size. These are always a possibility out here. Obviously, love catching them because I love eating them. This dude was hooked super well. All right. There's one. What are you? That one I didn't feel hit. Just went to hop and he was on. Oh, goodness. Oh, he's barely hooked. I don't know if we're going to get him. Yep, we did. Unlucky for him. Yep, he came off in the boat. Just another fish right in that same size. I mean, they're all rubber stamps. Crazy. There's one. There we go. I got a hit and missed him. And then this dude followed up. Gorgeous. Rubber stamp. Rubber stamp. Actually, he's probably a little bit smaller. This might be a 17 incher. A little bit smaller. I'm going to tag him and let him go, though. Get out there and grow. Grow even more. Get to be a trophy. And bite somebody else's war. All right, I ran back up into Bayou Liberty to shoot a short. As you can tell, the sun poked out on the way. Absolutely beautiful day. It is blowing maybe three knots or so. Just an absolutely gorgeous day. Fantastic action. The trestle is super hot. It definitely kicked off early this year. It's going to run for several more weeks. Got a little crowded today, but that's just part of the deal fishing out here. The good thing was the fish was stacked enough that you could kind of just stop in one area, make a bunch of fan casts all around, catch a few fish, and then kind of move on. When I was leaving, I noticed a ton of boats just south of the draw. So obviously they're catching them there as well. 
it's just really really good right now well hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did you know give it a thumbs up also subscribe to the marshman mass on channel on youtube if you haven't done so yet you can do that by clicking that button right there also here's two videos youtube thinks you'll like check those out until next time if we don't see you in the marsh or at the trestle we'll see you right here on marsh man mass on